Antichrist. The very word arouses feelings of fear and mental images of absolute evil. The Apostle Paul warned of an evil entity set up in blasphemous opposition to Yahweh. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Eloah or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Yahweh in the temple of Eloah, showing himself that he is Eloah. Believers have speculated for centuries as to the identity of this man of sin. Protestants have suggested a wide range of possibilities. Roman Catholics have suggested that Antichrist is a real human being, possibly of Jewish extraction. There is actually some truth to each of these suggestions. The word Antichrist comes from the Greek word Antichristos. Antichristos can mean either against Christ or instead of Christ, or perhaps combining the two root words, one who, assuming the guise of Christ, opposes Christ and takes his place. The Antichristos denies Jesus in the flesh is the Christ, 2 John 2, 7. The Pseudo-Christos affirms himself to be the Christ. The problem with each of these suggested interpretations is that they are too narrow in scope. A careful study of prophecy reveals just who and what the Antichrist is, and it is much larger than any one person can be. World's Last Chance believes that the accumulated evidence presented in Scripture reveals that the Roman Catholic Church itself is the biblically foretold Antichrist system. Its tentacles reach to every country on the planet. Its educational system has influenced minds and shaped laws for centuries. Its system of confessionals constitutes the largest information-gathering infrastructure on the earth. The doctrines of Catholicism have led to the enslavement of entire races of indigenous peoples around the world and the slaughter of millions more. Yahushua came to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, Luke 4.18. Thus, these doctrines fit the definition of Antichrist in that they are against Christ. The system of Antichrist is primarily the Roman Catholic Mother Church, followed closely by her daughters. These daughters are the Protestant churches who pay homage to the Pope by clinging to worship days calculated on the papal calendar. Martin Luther wrote that the papacy is nothing else than the kingdom of Babylon and of very Antichrist. For who is the man of sin and the son of perdition but he who by his teaching and his ordinances increases the sin and perdition of souls in the church? while he yet sits in the church as if he were God. All these conditions have now for many ages been fulfilled by the papal tyranny. Roman Catholicism as a corrupt system of deception and force perfectly fits the definition of Antichrist. It is against Christ. But there's more. Pope Francis, like every other pope for nearly 2,000 years, is the prophesied Antichrist because 
he is literally instead of Christ. Catholics teach the Pope is holy, the Vicar of Christ, or Christ on Earth. Vicar is the English form of the Latin word vicarius, or in place of. The Catholic Encyclopedia states, Vicar of Christ, Latin vicarius Christi, a title of the Pope implying his supreme and universal primacy, both of honor and of jurisdiction over the Church of Christ. The title Vicar of Christ is most expressive of his supreme headship of the Church on Earth. The title Vicar of God is employed as an equivalent for Vicar of Christ. The Almighty has never authorized anyone to replace him or his son on earth. Those who make this claim commit blasphemy against the kingdom of heaven. Every pope claiming to be the vicar of Christ has been antichrist or instead of Christ. Francis, however, is unique in papal history. He fulfills prophecy in a way no other pope ever has. John the Revelator was shown a beast ridden by a harlot. The identifying marks of this prophetic image point to the papacy in general and Francis in particular. In explaining the symbols to John, the angel stated, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. World's Last Chance firmly believes that the seven kings refer to the seven last popes that shall reign on earth before the coming of the Savior. The first king was Pius XI, who reigned from 1922 to 1939. The second king, Pius XII, reigning 1939 to 1958. The third king, John XXIII, 1958 to 1963. The fourth king, Paul VI, 1963 to 1978. The fifth king, John Paul I, 1978, who reigned for but 33 days. The sixth king, John Paul II, 1978 to 2005. The seventh king, Benedict XVI, 2005 to 2013. And the eighth king, Francis I, 2013, until the second coming. The Lateran Pact of 1929 was the beginning point of this end-time prophecy. Upon ratification of the Lateran Treaty, the papacy recognized the state of Italy with Rome as its capital. Italy, in return, recognized papal sovereignty over the Vatican City, a minute territory of 44 hectares, 109 acres, and secured full independence for the Pope. However, Francis is unlike any other pope ever to come to power in one very significant way. To understand Francis' unique position in end-time events, it is necessary to review the history of the last 500 years. The Protestant Reformation shone heavenly light on many truths that had long lain under the accumulated rubbish of error and tradition. 
The power of truth enlightened darkened minds and drew many to leave behind the errors of Catholicism. The Society of Jesus, or Jesuit Order, was established in 1540 for the express purpose of spreading the Roman Catholic version of Christianity to the world. Although not expressly formed to counter Protestantism, this new order quickly turned its attention to countering Protestant teaching and reconverting its adherents. The Counter-Reformation was an attempt by the papacy to stop the progress of Protestantism. It provided alternate interpretations of prophecy to deflect the cutting revelations of the reformers that the Pope was indeed Antichrist. The Jesuit order quickly gained in power and behind the scenes influence, but they never had one of their number become Pope until March 13, 2013. On that date, Jorge Mario Bergoglio of Argentina was sworn in as His Holiness Francis, Bishop of Rome, Vicar of Jesus Christ, the 266th Pope. Francis, the eighth and final Pope foretold in Revelation 17, is unique in a number of ways. One, he is the first Pope from the Americas. Two, the first Pope from the Southern Hemisphere. Three, the first non-European Pope in 1,272 years. Four, the first Jesuit Pope. The correlation between Francis as the first Jesuit Pope, while at the same time also being the eighth Pope of prophecy, cannot be overlooked. NBC News World was quick to see the significance of Bergoglio ascending the papal throne, observing, Pope Francis is unique not just for being the first Latin American Pope, he is also the first Jesuit Pope possibly signaling a renewed emphasis on traditional Catholic theology by the Church. Michael J. Sheeran, a Jesuit priest and president of the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, was quoted in the NBC article commenting on the Pope's quiet, simple life in Argentina. But that simplicity hides a steely determination to advance Jesuit principles, especially on the importance of traditional Catholic teachings, Sheeran said. That determination emerged during Bergoglio's service as the top Jesuit leader of Argentina beginning in 1973, Sheeran said, noting, he was a tough guy who made sure his men towed the mark. I think you'll find a man who is conservative theologically, but very strong on matters of social justice," Sheeran said. This is a significant statement. The Jesuits were foremost in spreading an alternate explanation for Antichrist that deflected the attention from the Pope and Catholicism. A theologically conservative pope is far more likely to lead the way in a return to the papal persecutions of the past in defense of the faith than one who is more moderate in his views. The criminal actions committed by theologically conservative popes are written in the blood of countless martyrs. Heaven alone will reveal the record of suffering resulting from the papal policies of history's theologically conservative popes. World's Last Chance strongly believes that in the very near future, Pope Francis will use the military might of the United States to impose the counterfeit Sabbath on the whole world. He will wage a relentless war against Yahweh's true followers who uphold Yah's true Sabbath and the true calendar. The ways in which popes enforce their theology on humanity 
is preserved in the bloodiest records of history. The rack, the sword, the flame were all used to force the conscience of all who stood for truth opposing the errors of Catholicism. Modern technology merely serves to increase the despotic might of those in power. Just as popes of the past used the power of the state to enforce their dogmas, so Pope Francis, as both the Antichrist and the last and eighth pope of prophecy, can be expected in the near future to employ every means at his disposal to exalt himself in opposition to Yahushua, enforcing the mark of the beast. While many Christians have understood the Pope to be Antichrist, the advent of the 20th century brought a change of attitude. It became politically incorrect to label the Pope the Antichrist. Many Protestants came up with alternate suppositions of whom or what Antichrist would be when he should appear. This is a dangerous delusion. The world is being deceived into expecting a future appearance of the Antichrist, while the real Antichrist is consolidating his base and power and getting ready to fulfill his Satan-set role. Thus, Satan's vice-regent is stealthily gaining in power and influence, while the masses are distracted with alternate, incorrect interpretations, looking for a future fulfillment of what is being fulfilled before their very eyes. Let all who love Yahweh take heed of the words of Scripture, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12.12 12. Get out! Get out of Babylon and every one of her daughters! Flee tradition and error! Embrace the truth as it is in Yahweh.